this video, I'm going to show you Valencia's Tuscany line of home theater seats. Before I begin, there are some things I need to get off my chest about the experience with Valencia. Please enjoy some marketing slides from their website while I go over them. When I ordered the Tuscany row of two configuration back in 2020, their website said that they were in stock, ready to ship, and would arrive in two weeks. I chatted with a sales rep placing my order and happened to ask if there was anything they could do for me on the price if I do a review of the seats on my YouTube channel. The short answer was no. After about two weeks of no shipping confirmation, I reached out to them asking for a status. They said they needed another two weeks. Two more weeks passed and still no shipping. Every two weeks, I contacted them asking for a status and they would tell me another two weeks. Mind you, these were not custom seats. They were plain, in-stock items with no special add-ons or upgrades. I didn't even get the sound shakers I really wanted in case that they would delay the order. The actual shipping date was just over nine weeks from the purchase date. At that point, I was just happy to finally see some activity. I get the seats, I set them up, and everything is good. After posting one of my walkthrough videos of the completed home theater, the seats happened to appear briefly, and Valencia took notice. I really have no idea how or why. They reached out to me asking for a favorable review, and trade for some accessories. I had already paid full price for the seats and the accessories, plus waited nine weeks for the order. It seems they were soliciting YouTubers with free goods in trade for favorable reviews. I wasn't having any of that and rejected the offer. I can only wonder what deals were made for the sugar-coated glowing reviews they are always getting because as you will see, there are some issues with the seats. So let's take a look at some of the storage inside the armrests. There's just enough room in there to hide some snacks, some cables, even the tray tables will fit right in there. These things are, um, they're okay. They're very light, made out of plastic, and they have a sticker on them. Carbon fiber, vinyl of some sort. And then you can just put it right back in. I have two tray tables. One of them came with a big scuff on it, as you can see there. There's enough room for a small box of tissues or cables. Um, put your phone in there or whatever. And emergency rations, of course. You always have to have those on hand. You get some remote controls in there. The little side panel is fully illuminated so you can control everything about the chair right from the side. The cup holder lights up. The under part of the seat also is illuminated with LEDs. Uh, depending on the pile carpet that you have, you may not even notice that in the room. Uh, it doesn't really light up very well with the carpet that I have. And then looking around back, we'll just take a peek under the flaps here, see what's going on. So a lot of the seat's been covered up. You can't really see what's going on in there. Uh, this is an individual seat, which means it has armrests on both sides. So this one is different than the next one, because that is the one that gets attached. And it only has one armrest on the side. And because there's no armrest on the other side, everything's fully open. And that's kind of where I keep all the cables stashed. I got a little extension cord coming out from that. And because, you know, everything has to be black in the room, you have to run the cable across the floor. And I need to cover it with a carpet, otherwise you'll trip on it. And it goes right up into the wall. I did have to buy that cable. The, the, the cable length that comes with the chairs wasn't long enough to reach. So keep that in mind when you buy chairs. And the diamond stitching is very nice. The headrest is pretty comfortable and because it's motorized you can get just about any angle you want out of it. My wife is 5 feet 2 inches tall and finds the headrest is too high for her and it has no effect while the lumbar is too high on her back and is uncomfortable. Another thing to keep in mind if you are shorter. I've seen complaints about these seats being too slow. If they were any faster, it would be hard to dial in the exact position without going back and forth on the controls. I kind of have a nickname for these chairs. I call them Lenny and Squeaky. 
that one squeaks, the other one doesn't. Uh, maybe they're just too close. Maybe they're, they're, they're packed too tightly against each other, I don't know. But I was not able to get rid of that squeak. I'm not an expert on leather, but when I unboxed these, I didn't notice any leather smell, like when you buy a new jacket or wallet. Plus, the feel of the material wasn't as lush as I was expecting, nor was it shiny like in the picture on their website. It's very flat looking. You can kind of see how the lumbar works. And the round button there, you hold that down, puts the whole chair back in place, and resets everything. There's no memory on these chairs, so whatever your favorite setting is, you're just going to have to go back to it manually. On the control panel, you've got a, a little USB charger, which is pretty standard in home theater seating. And we're going to take a look at how these lights on the chairs affect the theater screen, because obviously you're not going to have big blue lights in your theater room while trying to watch a movie. But they're fairly bright, they're effective when they're upright, but we never use them. And we'll just kill the lighting and see what happens here. Alright, so with a decent screen you're going to get a lot of blue light reflecting back into the room. And obviously that is going to kill your contrast, so you got to turn all that stuff off. And it's just one button click, each chair is individually controlled. off check the lights again and we do want to take another peek at that because the control panels on these chairs stay on all the time there is no way to turn that light off it's like having a flashlight in your face actually it's worse it's like being in a theater with some clown with his cell phone on and that's not what you're shooting for when you build a home theater it's obnoxious so we're going to test the cup holders now. Um, this cup sits in there flush and the tray table has just enough clearance. Alright, let's try the other side. The uh, tumblers fit in there nicely. Get that out of the way. And now let's pull out the other tray table, which has the scuff on it. Oh, what's this? It's not fitting. Could the tolerances be off on the chairs? Could Chinese engineering not be up to snuff? Well, that's awkward. Well, I've discovered that when you put the cup in at an angle like that, it jams into the cup holder in such a way that it will pull out that plastic insert with the cup. And of course, you can't use tumblers at all with these chairs because the tray table is just way too close to the hole there. So I would say that is a pretty big negative when it comes to home theater seating. You can't put your cup in and have the tray table. So one of the things I've been tinkering with these past few years is the rumblers, like the butt kickers in your theater seats, and they add a tremendous level of immersion. So I thought maybe I'll just try to install these in these seats and see what happens. But looking around at the construction, the uh, side panels are like super thin plywood, it might even be particle board. I could probably fit one of these in, but the mechanics and the seat reclining will get in the way. And because the rumblers are powered off of a thousand watt amp, they're going to come right out of that particle board. And there doesn't seem to be any other place to put them 
I'm kind of curious where they put their their built-in rumblers when you buy them. And then when you look at the uh, full seat, it does have a board on the back. But that's also super thin. That's like half inch. I'm going to probably just have to revisit that some other day. So here's how the chairs attach. They got like a little ratcheting system. Each seat has its own connector. Uh, the main seat has one and the add-on seat has one as well. So you can kind of just indefinitely string these along. These could be a little bit more difficult to assemble if you have a really thick carpet because you have to push them into each other. You have to slide them across the carpet to latch in. After having spent nine months of regular use with these seats, I'm pretty happy with them. They are comfortable and that's really what matters most. However, the flashlight and the armrests, the inconsistent build quality of the cup holders, and the plastic tray tables were all disappointments that you have to work around. Plus, if you sit the wrong way, you can trigger one of the buttons in the side panel. We frequently, by accident, turn on the LED lights just by shifting a little. I do plan to explore other home theater seating options now that I have experienced the possibilities. Maybe someday I can have my butt kickers working again. I don't feel like these are totally worth the asking price, but whenever a vendor offers free shipping or accessories with a purchase, you're still paying for them. Nothing is truly free. You need pillows blankets, something. Otherwise, you're going to have a flashlight in your face the whole time. So, there you go. Problem solved.